Hello, everyone. I would like to start my presentation by asking people the difference between these two groups. The main difference is one group is public social media, while the other one is private. Even though group two is private, that doesn't mean these platforms do not have traditional issues. For example, the messages I show here are frequently posted junk messages in Indian public chat groups. We will show later how we detect these messages and users who post these messages. So in this work titled Jettisoning Junk Messaging in the Era of End-to-End -end Encryption, we present a case study of WhatsApp. This work is jointly done with Arvind Raman, Demiola Izvola, Nishan Shastri, Kiara Tyson, and Kiran Garimela. I'm Pushkal Agrawal presenting this work. Focusing on this new issue, we provide our results around two research problems. The first research problem is how can we characterize this kind of new junk? And the second, how can we get rid of this junk in end-to-end -end encryption? The way we are going to do this is by joining these public political chat groups and collect the data using a toolkit developed by one of our co-authors. For example, let us take a different, let us take examples of different political chat groups. Once someone joins these groups, they become semi-private chat groups as all messages and users can be seen. But on the other hand, uh, on one hand, we have legitimate users who post these messages, uh, which are aligned to the group uh, to the group agenda. But on the other hand, there are junk senders who also join using this public invitation and pollute the chat ecosystem. To study, we, to study this phenomena, we collect a large data set. We gather data from 5,051 public Indian political chat groups. Links to these public groups are available on online search platforms. After joining them, we collect data from October 2018 till August 2019, covering uh, the general election period of April. In total, we collect 2.6 million messages from 172,000 users, and we also collect associated user actions, such as users leaving the group, users joining the group, and users being removed from the group. These are 437,000 user actions in our data. Again, uh, proper ethical approvals are being taken. Uh, the data is collected at MIT, and we make this uh, data available online using an anonymized version of the data, which I'm going to share with you. As a post-processing, we identify similar text messages with empirical look on the data. We find that a lot of messages are repeated and are posted again and again. Hence, we cluster near duplicates of messages using locality-sensitive hashing. The data involves messages in Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, and English. And this work helps in dealing with such situations. From 2.6 million messages, we ultimately uh, boil down to 766,000 unique, 766, unique message clusters. So with the help of expert annotators, we frame the definition of junk and non-junk. Any unwanted message that trigger ejection or unlikely to be in first of the group are taken as junk messages. Some examples are shown on the right. I have labeled this from English, but there are similar messages in Hindi, Tamil, and Telugu. And all of the messages are referred to non junk Using this definition, we train the annotators of local language and label a huge data set. We start by taking seed messages of users who are removed from the group. As you can see, there are 8,000 messages which are posted by nearly 250 users being removed from at least two groups. We take, we manually annotate this data and name is dataset one, where we have 63,000 messages of which 1,000 are unique. Then we expand our search using the keywords in these junk messages of set one. We call this set two, which yielded a large bit of Last data set for annotation. We again annotated this, uh, these messages with the help of the annotators in local language. And in total, we have 407,000 messages uh, which we labeled in this study. Using this data set, we answer our first research question. We break down the research question of characterizing this junk into who is posting this junk, what is posted in this junk, and how uh, basically this junk is repeated. Taking case of chat groups on one hand, we have legitimate users 
to basically discuss various topics of the politics. While on the other hand, we have communities of gun centers who send high junk amount of prohibited books in these programs. Overall, we find that over 37 junk message clusters have more than 1,000 messages in them, which is posted by a group of phone numbers, likely to be junk senders. We also find that junk senders are mostly from India. As you can see, the plot on the right shows non junk senders in the green and the y axis in the log, and junk senders are comparable to them but uh, less than the posters of junk send, non junk senders. But we also find uh, interesting patterns for country codes like Russia, Romania, and Pakistan, where we only have junk senders in our data. One possible explanation could be that my new SIM cards in India is not as trivial as other countries. So coming back to the example of the junk messages, you can see that there are different junk messages uh, which you can see as the top junk messages, and this revolves in different topics. So next, what we did, we moved to our second sub-question, is what is contained in this junk? We find that you, uh, this junk is largely containing arbitrages, big waves, and sales of free items. This we did using top 250 clusters comparing uh, having 81,000 of junk messages in them. What we see here that yes, these are traditional um, style of sending junk, but using a new end to end encryption platform. We also find that these clusters have embedded phone numbers and UI, which takes the discussion out of the platform and pick legitimate users. So the plot on the right so shows that junk message mostly contain URL and phone numbers, whereas non junk are not including such kind of messages, such kind of things. Moving on, the final question we ask here in the characterization of junk is how long does junk circulate? What we see here is a pattern, which is red light and green light. For this, let us first understand the life cycle of the junk centers. The timeline here starts with junk centers joining a group, mostly using a public invitation to the group. Then this user posts a check message. And then after posting such message, user voluntarily leave the group or evade, uh, leave the group to evade blocking or are being removed from the groups. The cycle continues after a small break again and again. We find that median duration of posting the same junk message is nearly 29 days, which is approximately 2.5 times more than the non junk message. For in detail analysis of joining and leaving patterns, please check our page. After characterization, let us focus on research question two. That is, how can we get rid of this chunk? Particularly, understanding the end to end encryption. To do this, we employ various machine learning techniques, which I'm going to discuss next. Broadly, we build three types of classifiers. Classifier one is based on the text based uh, model using word embed. Classifier two is metadata based model without using any text. -based. And classifier three is a mix of both text and metadata on the chat group. Basically, classifier three is discussing the classification only on the chat level, say the chat group of the data set. Now, let us go in detail for each of these. For classifier one, that is using the word embedding of the whole message, we did this for all four languages in our data using Mural, which stands for multilingual representation for Indian languages. It's a world embedding technique, which recently been developed by Google Research Engine. This is a traditional way of de detecting chunk, having the full knowledge of memory. We achieved a high accuracy and a burn score using the random forest model among all the models that we trained. Training class, taking this classifier one as the baseline, we next build classifier two, which preserves the end-to-end -end encryption and only relies on user life. The features, we learn our number of messages, country code, if the message has a URL in it, a phone number in it, the user was removed or not, and so on. We find that these features are also strong indicators of identifying young senders and get rid of the junk from these. We find comparable F point score and accuracy as classification one for classifying for classified two as well. Note that features in the blue can be attached as a two-bit information with the message header 
and will still preserve the anonymity of the actual message. And these two features are posting a URL in the message and posting a phone number in the message. The third and the final classifier is a mix of both classifier one and classifier two. That is, the text using the word and user action based on different uh, user actions, including if the message has a URL or a phone number. But this time, we do this for each group level. That means if there are 5,000 groups in our data, we build 5,000 different classifiers with the knowledge of device level text and user action. This is one of the most effective ways to have on device junk filtering without losing the end-to-end -end information. We find that these 5,000 classifiers on an average have a good accuracy of 86% and also have a good satisfactory FM score. For more details of classifiers and open access of our embeddings, please check our paper. With that, I would like to conclude and reflect on all the challenges and the uh, findings we have. The challenge uh, was to first label the data set in Indian language. For that, I would like to thank the annotators. Uh, more than 10 annotators helped us in labeling this data, huge data set. And the second challenge was to understand the level of spam, even though the chat was encrypted. Uh, we did this using the removed users' uh, messages and then identifying it at scale. In this study, we present first of its kind work on detecting and mitigating large junk on private messaging app, that is WhatsApp. But this is replicatable on different chat groups as well. In the first research question, we answer the character, we find the characterization of this junk. We find uh, that it's not individual but teams who are posting this junk containing the URL, ads, and sales. And this junk is often repeated. So a message which is still being labeled as junk can be repeated after a month or so. Why? Could be because the WhatsApp uh, spam filtering algorithm is not taking care of those things. And it's end to end encrypted, so it's quite hard to understand that. In the second research question, we ask how to get rid of this junk. And to do that at scale, we use different machine learning techniques. We used word embedding. Uh, for understanding the text as the baseline. And then we gave uh, an on-device uh, solution for uh, spam detection using only the metadata. We find uh, a good F1 score and accuracy of up to 86% for each groups and for accuracy of 87% for classifier two and classifier one. Uh, the data set uh, in a normalized fashion is available using this link. And for further questions and things, you can contact me on email or my Twitter handle. With that, I'm open to questions and happy to answer if anybody has other things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have questions? All right, then maybe let me start. So it, I found it quite interesting that, especially in India, you have this multilingual setting, right? And this is typically something that you don't necessarily think about but it creates some, some interesting aspects for investigation so do you have any insights into how the the spam is replicated across language barriers so did you look so you mentioned you used um, locality sensitive hashing but did you also do this after translation or after modeling this with a multilingual model no, that's a very nice question i guess uh, we were thinking of that but not specifically we tried that we do found that when you post spam, say in English or Hindi, that act as a lingua franca. So people who uh, understand, say Tamil, they also understand English. So uh, sending spam in English and Hindi give you a wider reach. Whereas if you send spam in local language like Tamil and Telugu, that has a very narrow audience, but a very specific audience. Uh, 